Today, I have two laptop adapters from SlimQ, or are they USB adapters? I'll be testing these adapters in various modes to see how they perform. These adapters have the unique feature of a barrel plug connection to be able to supply more power through a single port without any power negotiating tactics, and a USB bonus. These come in a massive box, so there has to be something extra in here. They do come in several configurations with various laptop bits though, and in this case, I got none. If you are new here, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see my links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. First, let's get these power adapters opened up and see what we get. The packaging is complicated for these power adapters, giant cardboard boxes. Everything is wrapped in plastic and I already removed it here. The F-150, for American viewers, yep, that's the model, comes in a portioned out foam filled box. The adapter comes with a 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter cable and AC extension lead we will look at a little closer. The adapter itself, a user manual, and some international clip-on adapters. First, let's look at the extension lead. This is a 0.75 millimeter square wire, which is a little skinnier than what everyone else includes as standard. Why cheap out here? The wire does least appear to be copper inside. On the international adapters, these are a bit weak and tend to get stuck. The Euro plug is a little off and the UK plug is where things get dangerous. Well, more dangerous. The UK, not always, uses a ring circuit and can have up to 32 amps at the outlet interface. The plug itself requires a fuse so that it can't pull all that current. These have no fuses and there's a really skinny piece of wire that certainly cannot handle a 32 amp fault condition. These are basically trash. Not quite death adapter territory, but close. This has the UKCA mark on the adapter, which is absolutely does not meet with no fuse, so this is a fake claim or something strange happened here. Makes you wonder what else they faked. Yes, it is safe. Trust us. The adapter itself doesn't seem too bad external build-wise, and it does have that unique feature of the barrel connector, and it also has two USB-C ports. The experience of unboxing the F240 is almost exactly the same. The box is the same, really. The same accessories are included, except now the AC cable is required as it connects to the power adapter, and it uses an IEC 320 20-C7, aka the figure 8 connector. One nice thing that comes in a box is a detailed laptop adapter plug connector card. This is actually pretty useful to find out which adapter you may need. But be wary, some laptops may need the power adapter to have a chip in it to identify itself, Dell, HP. These may have issues with these power bricks, even with the correct adapter. You get the same basic port options as the smaller version, but with a little more power budget available. The same UK adapter and skinny wire on the extension lead. The user manuals are simple and straightforward. They cover the basic operation and use of the power adapter. They don't make any claims of safety or efficiency in here. So this is the trouble point for SlimQ. Safety listing is not on these adapters for the US or Canada markets. Actually, any market I know of with these plugs. There's a tiny CCC logo on the 240 watt adapter, but that doesn't help if this is outside of China. The UKCA is questionable on the 150 watt adapter, and there's no way an unfused at the plug device meets UK guidelines. I do find it odd that these are for sale in the Canada and USA without listings at this power level with the included accessories. SlimQ needs to pony up and prioritize safety of the users and stop lying about it being too expensive when they sell a lot of these. They are direct plug-in devices with no ground and exposed metal output part, so I'd really expect it to be required. There's only two adapters here though, so I can't call them the trio of danger. Here are the weights for these adapters. The packaging for each is about 150 grams. It's a little more than that. The 150 watt adapter with cable weighs 415 grams. The 240 watt adapter with cables weighs 569 grams. The output cable weighs 103 grams, heavy duty, and quite stiff this one, as it needs to be. The input cable is 84 grams. In comparison with the anchor at 229 grams and 140 watts, these are a lot heavier and they also are a lot larger, but they do have more output power and capabilities. Time to power these adapters up. The idle power is not amazing on this one. It makes no claim of efficiency of power usage in this state, so it's free to fly as high as it wants. There is regulation for this category, but oh well, shouldn't bother with that. The power adapters provided would be nice if they were a little more safe. The nice thing about this adapter is it can share the power between the ports essentially equally. It also does not appear to require a reset on plug and unplug conditions. This is a big plus. No reset on plug and unplug is a sought after feature. The adapter, this adapter has lots of modes of operation. It can do fixed output voltages per the USB power delivery 3.1 specification. Each USB-C port can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts. This adapter has a 20 volt PPS mode, or a variable output voltage mode for more efficient charging. This mode has up to 60 watts of total output power, so no 5 amp charging here. No, Samsung won't max out here. The cost for this adapter is about $90, which is actually on the lower price side for this range of adapters. The USB side overloaded at 104 watts. The main output overloaded at 151 watts. This is good. 
This is a positive sign that the adapter does function correctly, even if not third party verified. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is high, but the electrical noise is not bad. The overall performance numbers actually look good across the board. The adapter does not meet the Department of Energy six requirements, the requirement to be efficient in real power terms and use low idle power consumption, although it didn't claim to. The voltages were riding the low end of the tolerance and fell outside of the USB specification for power delivery, so you may run into some issues with this device. The voltage held up on the DC barrel plug though. The 240 watt adapter is similar, but in a larger form factor. This adapter has the same basic functions and features as the smaller adapter, but with more watts. More watts can charge and power bigger things. This is really aimed at those larger gaming laptops. The adapter also has power sharing capabilities, so no reset, unplug, and unplug of USB ports and in this case, nearly the whole 100 watts on each port. More on that in a bit. The adapter has many modes of operations. It can do fixed output voltages per the USB Power Delivery 3 specification. The USB-C port can deliver the 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts, and it has the 20 volt PPS mode. This is the same as the other adapter is limited to about 60 watts, so no five amps. The cost for this adapter is about $140. This is not terrible for this level of output power. Although for that money, I expect the safety listing, which this device lacks, and it isn't some cheap knockoff except the travel adapter and the AC mains, which are cheapest chips. The power adapter turned off when at rated load of 240 watts. The USB port shut off at about 98 to 100 watts. There is no headroom on this device. The port shut down at the rated power level. I'd like to see a little room here, but there are other issues. I really didn't get a good temperature on this adapter since it turns off at the power limit. It's hard to soak at the rated load. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is high, but the electrical noise is not bad. The overall performance numbers also look really good. The adapter adapter does not meet the Department of Energy 6 requirements, no surprise, although it didn't claim to. The voltages are all too low though. These are outside the USB specification for power delivery and you may run into some issues with this device. The voltage on the DC barrel plug also faltered a little bit, dropping to about 19.4 volts at full load. As expected, both of these devices have power factor correction, this being the technique to consume the least AC current for the equivalent power level. This means less loss in other components like wiring and transformers. These devices all have power factor on all the time and all have nice clean wave shapes from low power levels through the maximum alpha power. Not much bad to say about any of these. They work well here. When we take a look at these on the comparison chart, in this case, we can see there is some variation, but these adapters are near the top for laptop adapters. I need to do some more larger adapters to get a more complete picture. In comparison with the Energy or Dell 180 watt adapters, they are similar, but really not. Let's focus in on the idle power. The idle power consumption of both SlimQ adapters is way higher than the values for any of the other laptop adapters. The quality is good in all cases, but more watts means more energy. Compared with what everyone else can do, these are not good. On the idle graph, I added a big red line to this, which is the DOE6 limit for these higher power adapters. On the left side of the line meets the specification and on the right side of the line is a little too much. These are over the line and they didn't make any claims here, but it is over the line. Heading back, let's dive deeper into the average performance. These adapters are all strong since in general, laptop power adapters have power factor correction. The overall score is essentially determined by when it gets turned on. The Slim Q is actually the category topper for overall performance here at the 240 watt adapter and the power performance is good. It isn't a surprise this happens with larger adapters with power factor correction. The 150 watt adapter seems to suffer a little more. It doesn't quite have the efficiency to keep up. But the feature set of the USB and the barrel plug is very appealing, right? Why can't Anchor do that? The top of the stack here has a lot of unsafety listed devices though. This is a worrying trend. On the average power consumption graph, you can see what I mean that they're all good performers. These adapters are spanning a wider range of power input, but the quality is high on all adapters. The top performer is still the Slim Q among laptop adapters, at least for now. This one wasn't much of a surprise though. The 150 watt adapter is a skip. The port sharing is nice, but there are better options out there already. I'd like to see this adapter with a safety listing and a DOE 6 mark, but the adapter likely has reasons why it can't meet either of these criteria. The UK CA mark on the device with an unfused UK plug is a bit concerning, and the cheaping out on the mains lead is also concerning. The voltage as a USB adapter isn't amazing, so this fails some of the basic criteria of a power adapter. Does it work? Yes. The 240 watt adapter is a little more compelling. At least it wins at something. The PQS is high on this device. It still has the cheap power cord and the DC voltage is not great. The adapter lacks safety listing, lacks efficiency marks, but has some of the better power sharing technology in power adapters. This is a solid maybe. If you see something you really want here and want to take the risk, go for it. But I wouldn't be putting this into my daily rotation. In conclusion, these power adapters have great quality numbers, but the voltages on the DC side drift lower with higher power levels. The USB voltage is out of tolerance at the higher power levels on both devices with the 240 watt adapter dropping below 19 volts. These power adapters don't 
try to be in specification with DOE requirements and aren't. These will cost more to run than a comparable laptop adapter in terms of the idle, but people focus on individual dollars, not some of kilowatt hours, so the number is still small. The biggest issue with this round of adapters is no US or Canada safety listing. There is no excuse for this. This device is a high quality premium grade device. Give people the satisfaction of a safety listing. I know teardowns can tell you a lot about the safety of a product, so these may be sacrificial devices. Price wise, 90 to 140 dollars is not crazy for the 150 to 240 watt category. Time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database. You can choose the laptop power adapter category to see and compare them all for yourself. If one of these looks like it will work for you, check out the affiliate links in the description. I get a couple percent, but it doesn't cost you anything. Thanks for watching. Next week's plan is to go back into Anchor territory. I have the Anchor Nano 3 30 watt adapter, which has been much requested. I'm going to mix in a few other adapters in this smaller wattage category that have been waiting for testing as well. This should be a fun one. Back to the low watt categories. Thanks again and bye.